so there's a huge polar bear that's just right over there, right behind me. Um, we just came over this mountain and it actually started running right toward us. It was actually pretty scary. He smells us. By the end of this century, climate models suggest we could be seeing temperatures that we haven't seen for about three and a half million years. And three and a half million years ago, it was a very different world, and I'm not sure it's a world that we want to try and live in. So we're in the San Francisco Zoo here at their uh, polar bear exhibit, and, and this is Ulu. Yeah, she kind of looks more like a grizzly bear right now. Yeah. But, uh... Good girl, Ulu. You want a fish? Come here, Ulu. How has climate change affected polar bears? Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of different effects from a warming climate and the loss of sea ice. We've seen uh, uh, unusual distribution and movements. Uh, we've seen unusual feeding patterns, more uh, cannibalism events. Uh, we've seen uh, declining stature. That is, bears are, are not as big as they used to be and not growing as fast. And one of the most important things is declining survival rates. And when people who work on polar bears say that survival rates are declining, what they're really saying is that more bears are starving to death. Good girl. Good girl, Lulu. And so how does that, uh, sort of the, the increased rates of starvation, how does that affect polar bear human interactions? That's a really good question. We have more and more bears that are hungry, that are spending more and more time on land. People live on land. Polar bears are predators, they're big animals, and the things that they normally eat are the size of you and me. If they're really hungry, they're not just gonna lay down and die. The other side of it is that if you're a traditional hunter living on the land, and suddenly you're seeing bears where you didn't see bears before, you might be inclined to think, oh, there's more bears. Seeing more animals often isn't an indication that there are more animals, it's an indication that there's a problem. Look, look at little bird. Yeah. See that little bird? Oh, yeah. Much must be a um, beach bird. Yeah. Looks very tasty. You know, you've lived in this general area for your whole life. Have you seen climate change affect this area? Yeah. There was a lot of change, just a lot of green. A lot of green grass and wellows are going really up higher than normal. I see more bears now than, than I did. And some of them don't look very healthy. And some are hungry, they're not getting seals just as they used to because of the lack of ice. Did you have to carry guns for protection? No. Why do you have to carry a gun now? For protection. It just feels like everywhere you go, just pull a bear. Bear bears seem to be more interest than they did before. Is it scarier to stay out here now than it would have been 40 years ago? Yeah, very much so. Not the same. And it's been really scary. But where did the bear come from? He had come across this way. And my tent was over here. I always think of it as around 2.15 or 2.30 woke up to kind of, I was in a dream, it was sort of like, and... We hear, I heard Matt screaming, help me, help me, um, in 
in, in a very frightened tone. So I sat up very quickly and looked out, and there was the bear over Matt's tent. Somebody, I think I heard M Marta maybe say, uh, he got Matt. We hear the scream, and everybody's screaming, and I jump out of my tent, grabbing the gun with me, and I look out, and Matt's being dragged by the bear. Where did he drag you? Off that way. I don't know how far he got me that fast, though. Um, and at that point, the bear had stopped about 75 feet away, standing there with Matt. And Rich um, fired the flare gun, uh, as he did before. The bear dropped Matt, ran away about maybe 50 yards, stopped and turned around and started going back toward Matt. And that's when it became really obvious that this bear was, you know, it was stalking us and it wasn't going to give up. Rich quickly loads the gun and fires it again and then the bear just takes off. In the direction where the big male bear had sat on the promontory a couple of nights before. Rick and I started running out to get Matt. We pulled him back, we realized he was alive. Um, pretty dazed and pretty bloody. So Rick, who is a physician, uh, took a quick look at him, assessed his condition, and said, look, we've got to get him back into the campsite. So we pulled Matt back in to camp, making sure there was no bear around. And in the meantime, we're all kind of, uh, well, we're concerned about the polar bear. We only had five shells left, and it was dark. And so if this bear wanted to be really persistent, um, we were going to be in, in, in real trouble. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, but I may be wrong, they took me. When I got hurt, they dragged me. And, and then Rick me. stayed with Matt inside this sort of tent enclosure that we created with the cook tent. Rick just immediately kicked into to doctor mode yeah. and took over the care of, of, uh, of Matt. And then I immediately uh, got the satellite phone out and started trying to get a hold of uh, the Parks Canada people. We were calling for help, and it, it took about five hours, I think, to get the helicopter there. That's where the helicopter landed. See those two oh, yeah. impressions? Yeah. I don't know what kind of a Mac they leave. He was still conscious and talking. Uh, I gave him some painkillers. He wanted to, kept wanting to stand up. He kept wanting to, he said he just didn't feel like sitting down or laying down, his back was sore. I said, that's not bad for someone who just got attacked by a polar bear. At least you're around to feel it. He laughed a little, and I sponged off most of the blood off his head and out of his hair and off his back. And then I went to the throat one. And uh, when I took the bandage off, the, the first thing I noticed was the smell. He had probably swallowed or inhaled, I would suggest, at least a half a liter of blood. And it was going rancid in his lungs. And once you smell it, it's, it smells like death. The evacuation of Matt was a wonder. You know, from the time that that helicopter picked him up to the time he was in surgery, it was astounding. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, it was just, um, it was just amazing to, to see him make it through that. There was a fella down there on that beach, six of his friends, sleep at night, near the full moon, July. Over the top of his tent came two bare legs, the four legs. Down they came, down they came, and ripped him out of his tent, took him away head in the mouth of the bay and <laughs> it was quite certain he'd be killed but he wasn't his friends saved him brought him back put a tent around him kept him warm got help people helped him took him he woke up in the hospital in Montreal <coughs> see his wife's face that's it. That's the story. I think that's all I want to do. You know, this isn't just about polar bears. Ultimately, unabated warming will affect every ecosystem, every uh, species that we're concerned about, including us. Mm -hmm. It happens that polar bears are at the thin edge of the wedge. 
they're already being affected because there's such a direct relationship between their habitat, the sea ice, and global temperature. I like to say that, that uh, polar bears are a, a harbinger of things to come to all of us if we don't uh, change our ways. Oh, everything's changed about polar bears for me. <laughs> polar bears have become such an icon for global warming, but, but they're all cute and they're all adorable, or they are furry, and that's not who they are. They are the top of the food chain, they are predators. As we destroy the ice, as we destroy their habitat, we are destroying this unbelievably magnificent animal. But their cuteness has changed for me, and I think for all of us. How do you feel about uh, Eli saying that he thinks that the bear that attacked you is the one that we saw in the willows over there? Well, that'd be good to see that bear again that I know is all right. I know I had feelings. <laughs> I don't know if it goes both ways. He'd probably say, I'd still like to see him as Tadaya. <laughs> I'd still like to invite you to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me what you got uh, planned for the rest of the summer. Well, I'm back to work on Monday after almost the whole month not being there. So I got, I'm going to have a lot on my plate. Labor Day, I'm having some friends over. I'm going to barbecue some ribs and some chicken. Have kind of a party. Actually, the, I'm getting some tattoo work done. Nice. All the bear tattoos. Really? And, yeah, I'm going to have some ink put on. I got a lot already. Can't see it, but... Um,